Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Blender 2.93 is finally here and this is the most recent and stable release. The 2.93 marks the last major release within the 2 point series and this actually marks the beginning of the 2.93 LTS. From geometry nodes, modeling, animation, physics and rendering, this new release does cover a couple of updates and also introduces a couple of new features. And with that said, let's take a look at some of the updates and improvement that is currently available with 2.93. First off is the UI. The UI has been slightly improved with some minor updates. The render visibility toggles are now shown by default and there is also an improvement to the transform arrow cursor shape in response to the line width changes. The navigation gizmo also have a very tiny update and right now there is better indication for negative axis and in terms of size and orientation this is now well you know well done now in terms of working with position gizmo there's a tooltip that displays below the bounds and this helps for easy readability and the status bar also got a very tiny update with the improvement of contrast look for showing report messages now let's dive in and talk about modeling there's a brand new taper mode to control how your curves get tapered and this is relative to the radius of the spline which you're trying to taper and of course this comes with three different modes the override multiply and also the add node and this is going to be very useful for those who love to play with curves and probably you want to taper a couple of parts you can actually find this one quite interesting there's also a new update to the subdivision surface modifier and this works in terms of how you would like your uvs to look like so in most cases you want to make your uv smooth and this is more like in relation to what you have on your viewport and in some sense you just want to make maybe the uv smooth but you want to keep the corners and this is something that you can now do with the brand new update to the subdivision surface modifier there's also a very cool update and new option that is now added to the mirror modifier and this deals with the bisect distance this simply plays with the parameters and you know you can now simply control the distance of your mirrored objects from one part to another and speaking of things that you can control the geometry nodes is right here so in 2.92 we did see the geometry node come through and the geometry node project has expanded and it has built based off the attribute system to do some more stuff and this has actually allowed for usability in a whole lot of areas right here in blender so in terms of volume data support sampling textures and lots more so there are brand new nodes that are now available with the geometry node and at the same time there are brand new sets of attributes that you can actually start working with and with that said as well there is the brand new inclusive spreadsheet editor now the spreadsheet editor is a geometry spreadsheet and this gives valid information to artists and creators on initial evaluated and final geometry points edges and faces and with a brand new workspace for the geometry node it is easier than ever for artists to just simply open up blender and switch to the geometry node immediately and of course it is worth knowing that right now rendering attributes created with the geometry node is very very possible something else which is extremely possible is at this point once you start working with your geometry node you can also create your basic primitive shapes you know your simple plane your cubes you can actually create all these things directly within the geometry nodes and you can use these things to drive and create some very interesting things so the geometry node has actually come a long way there's a whole lot of uh, attributes that you can now have access to and at the same time there's a whole lot of cool nodes that you can have access to way more than things that you were able to do with blender 2.92 right now in blender 2.93 all of these things are possible so with that said let's take a look at sculpting the sculpting branch of blender for this particular release comes with a couple of novelty updates there's a sculpt expand feature which was demoed sometime within the year and this can be great for making things like terrains organic and also stylized patterns on surfaces there's also a new transfer mode operator and this transfer mode operator actually allows you to switch objects while working or sculpting directly in blender so by simply hitting the d key you can switch from one object to another while sculpting and as well there is an initial face set by face set boundary tool 
So this is also something that most of you guys that would want to work with Faceset, which is actually known as Polygroup in ZBrush, would want to take a look at this. And this is more like a set of novelty tools that is currently available within the Sculpting branch right here in Blender 2.93. And with this set, let's take a look at Grease Pencil. So, the Grease Pencil section of the brand new Blender 2.93 packs a whole lot of punch. Now, from artists being able to import and also export SVG and PDF files to interpolation tools, which can easily make working with the Grease Pencil strokes an easy breeze, it's worth knowing that the Grease Pencil has come a long way from what we used to know and, of course, from what it used to look like. Some other cool improvements include the modifiers and also VFX tools. And actually, this comes down to the new noise modifier offset which is pretty cool for those who like to make some nice electric effect and as well there is a lattice modifier update and this is also improved as artists can now use more than one modifier for their app piece and of course over time we've talked about several tools and several updates within the grease pencil as we've seen the field tool we've also seen some very nice looking tools that you can use and of course these tools are just right there for artists to use and make the most out of blender while creating stuff with the grease pencil so tons of stuff coming over to the grease pencil and for sure link for these things are also going to be in the description just in case you want to check it out now with that said let's talk about eevee eevee also got a massive update with this particular release and with the implementation of depth of field so we did see the depth of field and the beautiful thing about this one is the depth of field was written from scratch so there is a few improvements and some very nice stuff with the depth of field right now which makes it super super awesome now there's also some few improvements and updates to the volumetric lighting and rendering and uh, that simply makes working with volumetric objects in eevee less and less limiting there is also a complete rewrite of the ambient occlusion and this one actually fixes some precision problems and uh, some over darkening artifacts that artists would get when working with EV in trying to achieve ambient occlusion. There are also updates to normal maps and smoothed normals as they don't produce strange reflections when reflections are actually below the surface that they are being applied on. There are also some very cool updates to the screen space ray tracing, subsurface scattering, funnel effects, glass BSDF, and also reflection cube maps. All of these things have been improved and also updated for Eevee. So just in case you're working with Eevee, you can now have fun working with this. Now with this set, let's take a look at the VFX and video editor side of things when working with Blender. Of course, we've not really gotten a lot of updates for this part, but today there are some honorable mentions. The FFmpeg has gotten an improved scrubbing performance. So in case you're scrubbing across a given script, yeah, this is now something that you can have fun working with. There's a proxy building and threading setting that's also been improved. And for motion tracking, for those who are into motion tracking, there is a new art track averaging operator. And as well, the sequencer and compositor isn't left out of this as they also have some very nice improvements for those who are into working with the sequencer and the compositor. And for the compositor, there's a redesigned crypto map workflow where a rendered layer or an image can be selected directly from the crypto map node. And as well, the sequencer isn't left out of all of these goodies as it now comes with a couple of more improvements. So from text strip improvement to a simplified proxy setting, there's also an inheritable blend mode which you can use with single input effect and of course there is an automatic proxy building and so much more so these are things that you can now work with right here within you know the nle and as well with the vfx tool so far so good the vfx tools and uh, also the compositor and an nle that exists with blender they're gearing up to speed you know these improvements are coming slowly but surely they are beginning to get to that point where creators that are working with the NLE directly in Blender will be able to take advantage of some of this cool stuff and create things. So Cycles will be shipping with the open image to Noiser 1.3. The version 1.4 was just released last week during the Beacon 4. But within the time of creation, this was the most recent. And of course, this comes with some improved uh, stuff. So in terms of the things that you can use the open image to Noiser 1.3 to do, this would give you sharper and finer details when your renders are done and at the same time this would offer you less blurry result also speaking about things that will be coming to cycles the open color io 2.0 will also be shipping with cycles 
and there is an update to the random walk for subsurface scattering and of course this is to reduce and also get some pretty good results in terms of improvement of how subsurface scattering will be looking like when you choose to work with this and this is coming with a Dwebly guidelines and uh, it simply reduces a couple of noises that you get when you're working or when you're rendering with subsurface scattering some other improvements that you'll be getting with cycles include the area light there's an improvement to the area light as it now comes with a spread angle to simulate the effect of a honeycomb or grid which has been placed in front of a box and as mentioned earlier cycles also supports geometry node attributes so just in case you're working within geometry node and of course you want to render those things right now you can do that and with this set there are little to no updates coming to the animation and rigging tools so at the same time there is also little to no updates coming to the nodes and also physics and as well the pipeline assets and ios are pretty much not getting so much updates with this particular release at the same time the data management linking and override also does have a couple of updates for those who like to work with it and of course probably want to check it out and you might also want to take a look at some of the very interesting updates that is coming to the add-ons section for blender and for those who have no idea there is this free add-on that you can get with blender once you download it and one of the very cool ones is the blender kit or the blend kit so the blend kit specifically does have a very cool set of things that you can do with it so you can have access to several assets and at the same time you can have access to several materials and uh, resources you can just simply download all of these things from the internet and get these things right here directly in blender and while speaking about things that you can get with blender the collection manager also have a very tiny updates for those who would like to take a look at this so pretty much uh lovely stuff coming over to blender 2.93 right now the lts begins from here the last version of the 2.0 series and right here we can start washing our hands and try to embrace the 3.0 as this is the next step forward and for those who would like to follow up with the lts and maybe you want to check it out you want to see when the lts for 2.93 is going to end since it's going to be starting right now this is going to be ending sometime in 2023 and of course we would also be getting a fresh version of blender 3.0 sometime in the year so just in case you're into that you might also want to stick around for those and for most of the things that we've mentioned that is just currently released with blender we've already covered an extensive video about those so i'm going to put a link in the description that will take you over to the playlist where you can see some blender updates or a link in the description that will take you over to key features that we've talked about before so just in case you want to follow up on this you can do well to check on that and for sure for those who like to hit me on discord there's going to be a link in the description that will bring you over to the discord and you can also hit me on ig and also on twitter tell me what you guys think about this one in the comments section blender 2.93 lts is right here and of course you guys should go ahead download it, test it out complain if there's bugs report those bugs and let's help make blender even better tell me what you think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update Free Friday, Tutorial Tuesday, Tips and Tricks, things like this. Peace.